So there seems to be some confusion, some reoccurring confusion as to why the this keyword may be used and why it's applicable um, within object-oriented programming based programs. So in order to sort of explain that here and just to provide some elaboration, uh, I have a fruit class and within the fruit class, I actually have my main method from which my program will run. This is actually something you may not want to do. You, you essentially want your uh, main method to so, sort of be in another file um, to sort of provide that sense of differentiation. But uh, for the purpose of this video, just to sort of keep it concise and short um, and all on one screen, I guess I'll do it this way. We'll all sort of merge them together. So in the fruit class, which actually is from this brace to that brace, suppose I have two instance variables like name and uh, let's see, I have name and I could have, I could have a double which could essentially keep track of the weight of the fruit, right? So that's completely fine. Um, now, as we covered before, the fruit class can sort of contain, um, so it can contain a fruit object, right? So uh, it could say, it, we could say fruit, and essentially it would take some parameters. Let's say, let's say it took, um, fruit took a, a string which is a name, and it also took a double, which would which would essentially keep track of the weight. Now, I'm doing this because I want this to sort of be, I want the name and weight to sort of be attached to the object, right? So when I create an object here, um, or an instantiation of the fruit cra uh, class, a reference of an object reference, uh, which can be fruit, um, fruit one, or let's just say my fruit, right? equals new fruit, essentially when I make this constructor, um, I want I want this my fruit to essentially classify itself with a particular name and weight. And so I can say the name of this fruit um, is let's say uh, orange, right? And its weight, let me just put a random number here, let's just 5.5, right? So what you'll notice is that um, we can actually print this out uh, in the constructor here. We can say, we can just say that the that we can print out the name, right? And we can also sort of print out print out the name uh, the weight. Now, essentially, that's all said and done, um, and of course, that would work, right? Because this this constructor is sort of sending back the string orange and the double 5.5 to this. And then it just acts on these variables and prints them out. And so when we when we sort of run this program here, we actually get orange and 5.5, but it doesn't seem like this is actually attached to the object itself. Recall that these class variables here, um, these are sort of the instance variables for any particular object. And these are essentially local variables. Um, and now when I when I do, when I try to print out in the main method here, when I try to print out my fruit dot name, I would hope to essentially print out orange, right? Because that's really what I've assigned my fruit to. Um, but you'll actually see I get null, and null is just the default value for a string if it's not initialized to anything. So it seems like what I was hoping for was that um, the name on the class level would essentially be the name that I'm referring to here. And that's actually not what ended up happening. Um, name and weight were essentially created local variables, which are sort of different from the class variables. And in order to sort of solve this, um, what I could do is I can say, okay, well, this name that I'm referring to here, I want it to be set to this name that I'm referring to on the local level. So the name on the class level, this name can essentially be equal to this name. And then um, I would sort of solve my problem, right? That, that, would, that would alleviate my, my issue here. So I could say this dot name essentially equal to the name on uh, in, on the local level. So this this dot name on the class level is equal to 
name on the local level and I could do the same thing. I could say this dot, uh, this dot weight is essentially equal to the weight that I have again on uh, on a local level. And so I can, I, I don't have to print them out. I could do that later, but this is just to show you that um, that the name and weight that we created before or that we have here, um, if we don't do, if we don't sort of utilize the, this keyword to set the class and the local equal to each other, then they're actually treated as different variables because they have different scopes, right? One has, one is on a local scope and one is on a global scope. So now when we do this, when we do myfruit.name, it says, well, okay, myfruit.name is here, it's null. But it's not null because the constructor actually says, okay, this dot name is equal to name. And since this constructor essentially takes in a name and weight, which is entered by the user orange in 5.5, the name on the class level is essentially assigned to the local um, variable. And so class and local now equate um, to sort of one to another. And that essentially solves our problem. So now when we, now when we print out myfruit.name, we actually get what we want. Um, and it would essentially be the same thing if we were to um, do it with, if we were to do it with um, my fruit dot weight, right? Awesome, cool. And just as like a side note here, um, this is sort of, in, you know, an odd way of um, sort of inserting um, values into a constructor. This this would actually not be uh, that common. This is sort of hard coding the values in, but what we'd actually wanna do is we'd wanna bring in a scanner here, right? And after bringing in the scanner, we would have two more variables here, which would essentially, and so we're getting an error because we actually have to import the class, but, um, and so what we would do is we would say, okay, uh, enter, enter your weight, right? Or enter name, right? Enter the fruit name. And then we'd have um, user input or user name, right? Or really we could just say, um, it would be a string. We could call it fruit name equals data dot next. Cause that's what's used for taking in a, the next word sort of that comes out. Um, and we could say uh, enter weight and we could say, well, double um, fruit weight, right? Equals data dot next double. And essentially these variables, which the user has entered, which are doubles or strings um, respectively can now be sort of inserted into the constructor. So fruit name and fruit weight can be entered instead of what we had before. And that would sort of represent what the user entered. And so now it can actually ask us for um, for the name we could say that we, so, so we could say it's, um, we could say it's a, uh, we could say it's a mango and we could enter the weight for the mango, right? And then it would actually just print those back because that, that's what we wanted it to do. And we could, I mean, in the constructor, I mean, we could definitely put um, put constraints, right? We could say, well, um, if the uh, if the weight that that was entered, right, sort of exceeds um, five point, we could just say if it exceeds five point five, um, or it, let's just say if it's less than five point zero, then what we can do, then and only then, will we set. Um, this dot weight equal to weight, right? So we can actually add these constraints inside here, which is pretty cool. Um, and so if we enter anything that's below, it'll work, but if we enter anything that's higher, so we can have mango and we can do 5.4 and you'll see that, um, so if the weight is less than 5.0, um, the weight they entered or the weight on the class level is equal to weight. Um, so if the weight, so it says enter weight and we enter 5.4, which is actually greater. And that's why it sets it to zero. So it actually has to be less than 5.0 in order for the class level um, variable to be equal to the local variable. So 
you would enter mango, right? And we would do, let's say 4.3. In this case, 4.3 would be assigned a value, but if it were to exceed 5.0, then we would have we would have trouble, right? And we could essentially do the same thing with, um, you know, we could say, well, uh, we could say if the we could only give them, you know, certain fruits to choose from, right? So if um, if the name dot equals um, mango, right? Or if the name dot equals, uh, let's see, apple, or if the name dot equals, uh, let's see here, orange, uh, then and only then would it sort of set this dot name equal to name. Otherwise, that too would sort of be given a null value. And so, if we if we do mango, right? If we do mango, and if we do anything that's below 5.0, then that would work. But if I were to enter sort of something which is not within that range of fruits, if I were to say a pear, and I were to say something which is actually above 5.0, like 6.8, for instance, then we would sort of not um, have those values set. And that, I mean, and that doesn't have to be the case. We could actually, you know, we could, we could say, well, okay, if if they if it's in this range here, set this dot name equal to name. Otherwise, we'll just sort of say. Otherwise, we will set. Um, this dot name equal to invalid type or invalid, right? And the same thing could be for here, right? Else we could set this dot uh, equal to 0, 0.0, right? And so if we were to enter anything sort of below or out of that range here, if I were to enter a pair um, and I were to enter something which is, let's say within that, I have invalid for the name, but 4.2 for the double for the weight because that was actually within the range, if you remember. And so we can actually play around with this stuff in the constructors, which is really what I wanna show you here. Awesome.